You are listening to Rebel Femme Podcast. We should make a podcast. Episode one. I'm your host, Marella Manelli. And I'm Yadira Munoz. You can find us online at rebelfemme.com or on Instagram at rebelfemme underscore podcast. We spend a lot of time servicing women behind the chair in our pink hair salon. And believe it or not, we know more than we sometimes want to know about what goes on in our clients' lives. In this podcast, we are going to get real and raw. Tune in as we have honest conversations about women's issues, beauty, life, and everything super random. No topic is off limits. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. All right, so welcome to our very first ever Rebel Femme podcast. Hello. So we've been actually talking about doing this podcast for about a year now, and we're really excited and we're really nervous. Mm Mm-hmm. Super nervous. Not as nervous as yesterday. So we, I'm going to be a little transparent with you. We actually, this is our third time recording this podcast. We bombed twice. We bombed twice, mostly because I like to say um and and a lot. So I really hope I don't disappoint you guys this go around. <laughs> It'll be a drinking game if she does. Uh, after the pregnancy's over. So after <laughs> August. And well, for the listeners. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> By the way, where is your beer? You were supposed to have a beer here. I have tea. That's that's bullshit. You were supposed to have beer. I didn't want to make you envious. <laughs> I, I would have been or a little burp. Bit... Yeah. Oh, that's a great. Yeah. <laughs> point. <the> entire thing. <laughs> 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 um, so to open up this podcast, we're gonna kind of talk about who we are and just introduce ourselves. So my name's Morella. Morella Manelli on Instagram. Those plugins. Yep. <laughs> Left and right. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be your turn. <laughs> Mine's Jedi Hairmaster. <laughs> so I'm a salon owner here at Rebel Femme Salon. We're actually in the media room here at the salon. And it's actually located in Mission Viejo, California. And I've owned the salon for a, about a year, technically two years, but one year actually running. And we'll maybe kind of talk about that in a future podcast or maybe in this one. I don't know. I'm also a mother to three kids. So a 14 and a 10 year old, two boys and a one year old daughter. And then I have another baby on the way. So two unplanned pregnancies throughout this building of the salon and trying to open it, which is completely crazy and nuts. (sighs) Yeah. (laughs) But like most women, you just kind of figure it out. Roll with it. Yep. And I'm also an educator, so I have a little thing that um, a lot of people may or may not know about me. I used to be a full-time educator with Kenra, traveling all over pretty much the West Coast and little pieces of the Midwest, and just kind of teaching and educating stylists in their salons about color and upstyling, so it's definitely a passion of mine, which is kind of why we have the media room here and what what inspired me to open up the salon. So gave us kind of like the creative space and uh, freedom to, you know, make more YouTube and Instagram videos and just kind of alleviate me creating all of these in my kitchen (laughs) table. So your kitchen office. (laughs) Yeah, it's just crazy. So, you know, especially now having like this whole tribe of kids in my house, it's just (laughs) can't do it anymore. So it's kind of nice to have this media space. So I don't know. You dare tell us a little bit about you. So my name's Yadira, and I'm actually a little terrified because I'm an introvert, so this is like, my palms are sweaty, my back's a little sweaty right now. This terrifies me. So the bottom of your butt cheeks are sweaty? Maybe. That's where I get nervous. Mm, That's a little TMI. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, that. (laughs) I'm also a stylist here at Rebel Femme. I've been doing hair for about 12 years, I think. Um, maybe a little bit more. I don't remember. Uh, what else? I did most of the, if not all of the interior decor for the salon. Yep. Our in-house interior decorator. DIY till I die. (laughs) Um, I also have about four fur children. I have three bunnies and a cattle dog who I love with all my heart. And yeah. So, Morella. Yes. What are you going to name your baby girl? Because I'm so excited. 
I have no freaking clue. So I have my kids have pretty unique names with the exception of my oldest. So my <laughs> oldest name, my oldest son, It was at one point. <laughs> it was at one point, I guess. But, you know, he's 14, so his name's Jaden. So it's, like, not unique at all. And his middle name's Robert, and we do not call him in J.R. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I ever knew that. Yeah, I don't really like to talk about it, but... <laughs> I see <it's>, why. <laughs> it's um my husband's grandfather's name, so... Oh. And I was, like, so adamant. I was like, you guys cannot call him J.R. Like, that's just not going to happen in my house. <laughs> so he goes by Jaden. And uh, Zaya is my 10-year-old son, so that's definitely a unique name. And it means... Mm-hmm. Uh, soft glow of a moon, so Aww. very celestial. And then Cosima, you know, my daughter, my one year old daughter, she, like hers means universe. And I was inspired by Orphan Black, which was like, or is a really great show. It on is, and she's BBC. a total badass. <laughs> yeah, network. So definitely, if you don't watch Orphan Black, you totally should. It's about clones. It's pretty cool. It's amazing. And there's like one actress, I don't know her name, but she like plays. All of them. All of the clones, and sh- she just, like, gets you sucked into, like, each character. Yeah, like, how do you bounce back and forth between all those characters? Right. Ah, uh, Sistra. <laughs> like, what's what's her... <laughs> what's that character's name? Um... <laughs> dang it, I don't remember. One is Allison. The other one is Cosima. What's... Yeah, so that's basically what we're getting at, is that my daughter is, like, named after one of the clones, which is... Her name's Cosima. <laughs> But I want to know the one that says Sistra. Mm, oh my gosh, it's like gonna drive me crazy. It's time for Google. Oh lord. But yeah, <laughs> so this this character, it's like she's my favorite because she's like this. I think she's like Russian or yeah. something. She has like this crazy wild blonde curly hair, kind of like Shakira, you know? Yeah, yeah. And she just has like this amazing accent, and she says like the funniest shit on the show. But we can't think of her name. And it's, it's giving... So there's, like, more than the four sisters. There's, like, a whole army of them. <laughs> so Google is giving me all of their names. Oh, no. <laughs> well, anyways, while she's, like, looking that up, I have no freaking clue what I'm going to name my daughter because... Or my, my fourth child because it has to be something unique and mostly because my name's unique. And I can't have a common name at Helena. all. Helena. Sorry. Helena! Right? Something like that. Helena, Helena, Helena. Helena. <laughs> yeah, definitely. See, like Helena is just a little too common for me. It is. So it's, I got a little plain. I gotta come up with a, a unique name. So if you have a super unique name, maybe like go to our podcast and comment on our last photo and be like, "Hey, what about Nova, Nova. What does Nova mean? Oh, like Supernova? Like, yeah. Oh, hmm. I'll have to keep that one in my back pocket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm down to keep the celestial thing kind of going, so that'd be so rad. But but it has to sound good with Casima, so Casima and Nova. Yeah. <laughs> they sound like stars. Okay. The stars are aligning, Marilla. <laughs> so Yadira, mm-hmm. why don't you tell our listeners the exciting news, something that's like happening for you this year? So I'm getting married on Halloween. And yeah, it's going to be super non-traditional. Are you going to wear a black dress? Of course I am. (laughs) I tried to joke with my mom and say that I wanted to wear a red dress, like Lydia Dietz in Beetlejuice, and that didn't end very well. (laughs) That's exactly what I'm envisioning, though, you know, is Lydia Dietz Halloween-inspired wedding. Yeah! You know? Like, who's going to marry you? Oh, so uh, Tina, our junior stylist at the salon uh her boyfriend is going to marry us we've known him for a few years and he's just been a good friend to us so we asked him to get ordained (laughs) so what is he gonna wear because i feel like he should wear the black and white striped suit that beetlejuice wears oh no see he's being a (laughs) diva i hope you're listening elliot (laughs) he told me if you guys don't know who prayers is he's kat von d's husband and he is self-proclaimed Cholo Goth. Wait, his he's named himself Prayers? I thought that was the group's name. Well, no. Well, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, okay. I thought, like, the artist's name... But he always named... goes by, like, Prayers. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hi, my name's Prayers. Like, what... <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, that's just weird. 
Um, I'm sure logo. <laughs> still makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. This stuff is catchy, though. I will say that. Okay. It's stuck in your head, even if you don't want it to. Okay. Well, you should definitely go on YouTube if you want to see a train wreck, because I have, <laughs> and it's freaking terrible. Oh, so, so back to what we were saying. Um, Elliot wants to dress like prayers, or I don't even know what his real name is. So I don't know. He wants eyeliner. He wants eyeliner. He wanted black lipstick. But with the eyeliner, he wanted it to run down his face. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> wait, 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 no, no, there's more. He wanted to dress up like Prayers did for their wedding. Kat Von D and Prayers Wedding. I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, you all must look this up. There's a lot of lace involved. He wants to wear lace? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was joking. But I drew Wait, the line. a dude in lace. Yeah. Like a manly man in lace. A manly man in lace. That just doesn't make sense to me. It was a lace top. It's a little feminine. The button down. And he had, like, this big gaudy hat, like... Hmm. All right. That had gonna... lace coming down the we're front, too. <laughs> definitely gonna have to look this up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's what I'm planning right now is a wedding. And I um, accept all suggestions... Because I am definitely struggling as far as planning goes. I don't know what I'm doing at all. Well, I can't definitely help you because I got married in Vegas. See, that's sounding better and better every single yeah. day. <laughs> it was like it was like two or three hundred bucks, and I swear the guy that got us married was like a Elvis impersonator. That's amazing. But he didn't do the Elvis thing. It was just oh. like the way he was talking. He was like Stuck We're in gathered Elvis. here today, <laughs> and I can't even do the Elvis accent, but it was just like so weird. Like we basically g giggled the whole time we were getting married because it was just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> Forever Elvis. <laughs> so I think you should go into why it took us so long to get in here into the salon. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I actually signed the lease January two thousand seventeen. And trying to get into this freaking salon and, you know, or into the space really, but the salon space is 2,300 square feet and I fell in love with it instantly, even though it had needed a lot of work. Like I think <laughs> the average person, if they walked into this building that I'm, that we're in, they would have like, basically no. walked away. They didn't, they probably would not have wanted the project that was to come, but I fell in love with the space. I'm one of those people that can like look past, you know, all of the trash and look past all of the dirt and dust and all of that. Um, I, I think I would be a really good home flipper for that reason, but yeah, I looked past all of it. That's our new thing we should get into next in the future. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you might want to write that down, <laughs> but I fell in love with the, uh, the windows, the natural lighting, which is huge for a salon. I mean, what salon has just great, natural lighting and not many and mm -hmm. I just really fell in love with it and I just could see it so I, I signed the lease and it was just problem after problem with the city and also with contractors and basically we couldn't get in here the first six months all because of a bathroom that was not ADA compliant <laughs> and it was literally just the two walls need to be moved out one foot so that was one issue and the city of Mission Viejo was so difficult to work with. And Ugh. I honestly, I wish I would have like done my research and asked other business owners in the area, like what their experiences were. Yeah. Because after I already signed the lease and after I got in here, I learned that their experiences were very similar. So, you know, if you ever aspire to open up a business, definitely, you know, go interview a few places, maybe some businesses that are similar to yours and see what their experience is with, you know opening up but that that would be mine but essentially that's kind of what took us so long and we didn't get in here until like the first week of January 2018 yeah and literally it was just me Gadira and Ashley and I was already eight months pregnant <laughs> and <laughs> which is freaking crazy now that I think about it I just remember you on a ladder and me just underneath you like oh my god she's gonna fall off and she's gonna pop like a watermelon 
I was changing ceiling tiles. I was on my hands and knees scrubbing. Yudira and I painted this entire salon because we, we basically, after all of the crap that we had to go through, I was on a really tight budget. Yeah. And I couldn't afford, like, or it's not that I couldn't afford, I just didn't want to spend the money on, like, painters and stuff like that. Like, wherever I could cut corners, like, it was going to help my bottom line so I could get this place up and running since it took us a whole year. Yeah. And we were sitting on inventory and just, you know, just crap and not making any income. So, yeah, we, we basically got it up and running. And literally the day before we opened up, there was this huge mountain of trash and debris Probably, <laughs> there I'm, I'm going to guesstimate like it was like a seven by 10 pile of trash that was about <laughs> six feet tall. That the contractors left behind. That the contractors left behind. So, you know, I'm like eight months pregnant and my husband uh, rented a truck and oh, right. literally like, honestly, like he... Yeah, he did. He did a lot of work because uh, I, I was just me and him and, and I was just like pushing the trash out the door as whatever I could. But a lot of the stuff was like super heavy, you know. Yeah. So he yeah, he lifted all of that debris and we took it to the dump. And then Yudira and I don't know if Ashley came or not, but it was like, did she? I'm not really sure, but I know my, my kids were here and we we like swept, swept and mopped. And yeah, mopped. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We mopped like four times and it was still really dusty as hell. The dust didn't leave for like months. Yeah. Probably a good half a year. Yeah. I think it took for the dust to finally go away. But yeah, that's literally how we opened up the salon. <laughs> it was super fucking dusty <laughs> and the mirrors weren't on the walls, but we had our stations and it was functional. It wasn't like the best situation, but at least, you know, Yudira and Ashley and myself. We could had, take clients. We could take clients, yeah. And you know what? Those clients are still with us. Yeah. And they totally appreciate the... What it's turned into now. Yep, the process, the evolution, and it was great. So, you know, now we can laugh about it and look back on it. and We have great memories. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of sweating. <laughs> Too much sweating. I, um, those were some pretty good workouts, I will say. Yeah. <laughs> Need Dude. a booty workout? Go paint some walls. <laughs> <laughs> a 2,300 square foot salon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So anyways, back to, you know, why it took us so long. It was mainly the bathroom, which by the way, we decided because the bathroom was the biggest reason why we couldn't get into the salon. We wanted to make it ridiculous inside. Yes. So we had this wild idea to make it gold glitter walls <laughs> super over the top <laughs> so if you don't know yadira has a diy video on youtube where we actually show you the process of how we did the glitter wall in the bathroom mm -hmm. and you can actually see the glitter bathroom like on our actually on our website and on our feed and stuff um but you know yadira is our interior decorator and she's helped us you know, do a lot of things, but the bathroom is definitely one of them. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> where do you get your ideas from? Even though the, the the metallic wall was my idea, and then it would turn into glitter, which was yours. We had to fix that a little bit. <laughs> it looked like poo-poo smeared all over the walls. <laughs> um, ideas. I think I just get them mostly from, like, Pinterest and other Instagram accounts that are people who like to... DIY their homes. Like, there's this one girl on Instagram who gives me like total aesthetic. Oh yeah, what's her name? Um, I uh, at home with Ashley. That's right. She's so cute. So I've been actually following her too since you told me about her. And I don't know if you saw her like recent uh, post where she did the her rainbow. She shed? Oh nope, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, her she shed is exciting me right now. <laughs> oh, no, I haven't seen the she shed, but I saw her little rainbow stairs in her house. <gasps> oh, yeah, those are so cute. They are so cute. It's all pastel rainbow. Can I was we like, do the stairs outside? No, huh? No, they're not the same kind of stairs. And we, we can't, definitely can't do it outside. Mission Viejo is like, does not allow that shit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. It's got to be boring brown. Like, we live in a very, like, conservative area. But, you know. It's not Rebel Femme. <laughs> no, it's not Rebel Femme at all. But when you come into the salon, everyone's like, oh, it's so cute in here. <laughs> Everybody loves it. So, yeah, Pinterest is definitely a great source. I love Pinterest. Pinterest, YouTube. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. 
Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest. That's where all my ideas sprout from. Yeah. Or I see something in a store and I think it's ridiculously overpriced and I'm just like, oh, I can make that. (laughs) Sometimes I can't. Well, definitely check out, you know, if you're curious about the gold glitter and how it's done, you can check out our video. It's actually on our YouTube at Rebel Femme Salon YouTube. And you can definitely, you know, see the process and, and we're, watch us get drunk. <laughs> yeah, we, we drink beer and pizza. So this is at like, 10 a.m. <laughs> at 10 a.m. This is pre-baby pregnancy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was allowed. Totally. So how do your boys feel about the next baby coming? They're, they're, since they're so good with Kasima already, like, what's that like? I think they're really excited, um, especially, like, my 10-year-old. He's, like, really, really excited to have another sister. And they're just excited that it's another girl. They did not want to have another boy in the family. They're, like, you That's know. That's so funny to me. <laughs> yeah, they just they just really wanted another sister. So they're they're super excited. And they are really good with Kasima. So. And they do, they come in here quite a lot. So they come into the salon. They're um, sometimes can be helpful. But if you do see them in here. I'm usually yelling at them. Or they're arguing with each other. Yeah, it's just, you know, typical. (laughs) I just learned that it's like... It's their boys. They're boys. Yeah. And they're stinky. And I'm trying to teach my 10-year-old that he needs to wear deodorant. (laughs) That's so sad. Oh, my gosh. So yesterday, (laughs) I went home, and he literally was in the house all day playing on on YouTube. Or not YouTube, but... like what's that stupid Roblox? Oh, okay. And he was chatting with people, and literally he did not get out of his room, did not even take a shower. Like he he brushed his teeth that day, but no shower, no shower. Oh, and no. I opened up the door to his room, and it was just instant armpit smell. <laughs> just like it made me gag. Me in the face. <laughs> yeah, it smacked me in the face, and I was just like, wow. And I was like, you need to go take a shower right now, which is <laughs> typically. <laughs> my conversation on a daily with them. So. Yeah, I feel like you can smell them from like a mile away. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I think it's interesting that, you know, I have the two boys and, you know, my husband, that's like, I don't know. I think that they're like, I think Curly for sure. Like my husband, he's like manly, but it just looks funny to see him like in here with all the pink walls and stuff. And then <laughs> with all our passwords. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So yeah, we, we have like, for example, our, our Wi-Fi password, I guess that's like a good one to share, Yeah. but it's, it's uh, what is it? Girls rule. Yeah. Yeah. So we have <laughs> lots of stuff like that. So my husband has to like, but girls rule for like Wi-Fi password. And it's it's always like the funniest thing to hear him say these things because he says it with this look on his face, like, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> And then my, you know, my 14 year old, he goes to middle school, but he's always telling me how, uh, his, his friends tell him like, your mom's a feminist. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> so I want to talk about your fur babies for a second. So Yadira had the best, seriously the best holiday oh, yes. card. I have ever received in my life. It's actually still on my refrigerator right now. Yeah. And it's March right now. So almost, we're almost into April and it's her cattle dog with these like candy cane antlers. Is that correct? That's exactly what they are. Oh my God. And it is like the way her dog is posing. We're definitely going to have to share this on our IG feed, but it is like, it is like the best thing ever. It is the best. So I have to know what is the next photo shoot going to be like. <laughs> so I have one planned and it was supposed to be for Valentine's Day, but I guess it can just be for whenever. Um, I really want to take Ashley's dog. She has a cute little wiener dog named Dinah and her and Harley get along somewhat. Uh, but I want to put them in cute little pink robes. And give them, like, cute little, um, I found these toys that they're, uh, what are they? One's a little Starbucks-looking cup. Okay. It has a squeaky toy inside. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the other one's a puppuccino. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> Do they actually make those at Starbucks? 
I, I think they, they do. do right? It's just foam. Okay. I think it's just like oh, okay. the milk foamed up or something oh, okay. like that. Or whipped cream. I can't remember what it is, to be honest. I wouldn't want to give my dog whipped milk. He'd be <laughs> farting a lot. <laughs> Stinky mess everywhere. She's never had one. So I don't want to find out what it's like. <laughs> but yeah, that's what the next one I want it to look like. Kind of okay. like a girl's night in. I dig it. I dig it. Give them little masks. So they they actually, both of those dogs have their own Instagram accounts. But they do. I don't know what. I think, I think it's Dinah the Dapple. Yeah, that's what it is. And then Harley's is Harley Quinn ACD. <laughs> <laughs> What's ACD? A Australian cattle dog. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Harley Quinn was already taken because it's Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> All right, that's cool. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about why this podcast took so long. So at the beginning of this podcast, we said that we wanted to start one, and um, it took us a year to get started. And the main reason why... For procrastinators. We are procrastinators. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like we, I think just, this has been like a whirlwind to just get in here. Mm-hmm. We had a lot of marketing to do. Yeah. Still have a lot of marketing to do. Mm-hmm. And Cause just finding the time to do all of this. And then with you, your schedule's so busy. Yeah. And, and I have so many, I'm like, definitely, I have this creative mind. So I always have all these crazy ideas and I like wish I could do them all. <laughs> We just have to fine tune them all. Yeah, just fine tune them all. But, you know, I think it's definitely a good and a bad quality that I have. But I'm always like, let's do this. And then, you know, it's just, yeah, again, finding the time to do it. Yes. It makes it a little difficult. So definitely procrastinating and just setting up the salon, it just took forever. And then not to mention I had a baby last year. (laughs) And you're about to have another one. And then I'm about to have another one. So, Yeah. (laughs) It's been a challenging, so that's, procrastination's definitely been a main factor, but I think the main one was just fear in general. Oh yeah, for sure. I think for me, it was just, are people going to want to listen? Are, you know, are they going to like what we say? Do they care about our thoughts? Do yeah. Do they care about our opinions? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hopefully. Actually, hopefully, but do I really care? No. No. <laughs> So hopefully you like us and hopefully you're still listening. (laughs) And Uh, if you don't, bye. (laughs) Yeah. But you know, fear definitely was the main reason. And I think, you know, just trying to get over that hump and, you know, I I always talk about this and I'm a big believer in this and it's the main reason why I even opened up the salon in the first place. Cause believe it or not, that uh, opening the salon was my third attempt at opening up a salon, but I'm a big believer in putting yourself in the uncomfortable situations that are healthy, uncomfortable situations. So that way you can grow. Mm. And for a lot of people, we kind of stay in our comfort zone Mm -hmm. and we like to stay in our bubble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the bubble. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we got to, you know, think outside the box and take those risks so that way we can have our own personal growth. See, and I'm that person that just likes to hide underneath the covers and just wait it out. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think a good example, too, I mean, aside from me, this being like my third attempt at opening up the salon, I think for me, a great example of personal growth was back in 2014 when, you know, Instagram was still pretty new. And my friend Kelly actually you know, encouraged me. She was like, Oh, you got to get on this new app. You know, people are sharing like their hair stuff. And she's like, I really think that you should post, you know, this. Oh, Kelly, you- Kelly? Yeah. Kelly, oh. Kelly, Kelly Pence. So I actually did Madison's hair. Oh. I did an updo for her. It was, that was my very first Instagram post still up there. It's literally the very first one. What? And it has a filter on it. His <laughs> filters were cool. Like when Instagram first came out, they were a thing. Yeah. I mean, so people still use filters, but it was like the OG, you know, Instagram filters. Before hashtag no filter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she was like, you know, you do such pretty work. You should, you know, post this photo. And so I did. And people actually liked it. And people started following me that I didn't know. And I was like, okay. And then I just kept doing more and more. And then it just kind of organically happened for me. And 
I honestly was really scared to put my work out there, just like I think any artist. Yeah, because you're just open to all this feedback that can be possibly negative, and we're artists, we're sensitive. Yeah. Like, you know, so there's this, uh, I'm a big Erica Badu fan. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that about me, but I love Erica Badu. She's so fucking weird. I actually follow her on Instagram. She's a Pisces, and most Pisces people are just, they're just crazy. I don't care. I don't care if I offended anybody with that, but they are. They're crazy. And I'm on the cusp of Aquarius Pisces, so I'm a, I'm a Pisces on leap year. <laughs> so I'm born in February. So, uh, but Erica Badu, uh, I remember on one of her live performances, and it's recorded, but it's like that song Tyrone, like. You better Dude. call Tyrone. Oh, okay. Okay. So it was like, I think one of our first times she was performing it, but before she performed it, she says, keep in mind that I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. <laughs> because it's true. You know, it is. Whether, whatever kind of art you do, you just put yourself out there and you're like, you are sensitive. Yeah. It's, you're vulnerable. Totally. And then if somebody doesn't like it, it literally ruins our day. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so being vulnerable can be good. It's good for our growth, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and now now that I get trolls and stuff on my on my feed occasionally, especially on my, my baby videos that I have oh with my, my daughter. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, they're actually quite entertaining. I, I, I do. It's entertaining because half of these people, I'm like, Where'd you go to school? Yeah. What'd you learn? <laughs> yeah. And like, where's your grammar? And yeah. <laughs> and what does I'm going to beat the brakes on that bitch really what mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I really want to know. And so does Ashley. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to get into that on a t- definitely different podcast for sure. Hands down. But I think, you know, we can probably like wrap this podcast up. We actually did a lot of talking on this one. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> this is great. So, you know, this will wrap it up. And, you know, if you guys have any, you know, comments, questions, or suggestions. Some stories you want to stare, not stare, share with us. (laughs) You can email us at hello at rebelfem.com. So hello at R-E-B-E-L-F-E-M-M-E dot com. And send us over your suggestions. And then follow us on Instagram too, so rebelfem underscore podcast. And we'll be sharing little snippets of our podcasts here, now, to come, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> little videos here and there. Yep. <laughs> so thanks for listening, guys, and make sure to subscribe. Tune in every Monday morning for new episodes on new topics. So we'll see you next week. Woo! Bye. <laughs>